So uh, there's some random information about solubility that comes up in the very last part of the question. You're throwing limestone into nitric acid and sulfuric acid. You wash it, you dry it, you weigh it every day at the same time over five days. And here's the graph. Okay, so question A, the line of best fit. If you draw a straight line, it's wrong. If you draw a line that jogs along, and mm, that's wrong. It has to be a smooth curve. But they've made it so that if your smooth curve hits all the crosses, it's going to be smooth and wobbly, no points. So, uh, oh, it's a little bit of a feeling. Lovely. So I'm going to try to draw a smooth curve. Yep. And be careful you don't have a cheeky tick up at the end like that, because uh, that would be magic. So the initial rate from the graph were three points. So to get the rate from this kind of graph, you need a tangent line. Or well, what time are you going to put it at? Well, initially, so it's at zero. So I'm going to draw a zero time tangent. So that's uh, one point, and now we have to work out the gradient. So the gradient is a rise over run. So it looks like my vertical part of this triangle here is going to be 0 0.18. And the horizontal, well, that's just going to be one day. That's rather lucky, over one. Put the units in, and so my initial rate is 0.18. For one point, grams per day for the second point. Nice. Uh, they'd accept 0.16 to 0 0.2. Uh, most people couldn't do that, apparently. Well, now you know how to do it. Some people converted uh, to moles per decimeters cubed and back calculated to how much nitric and sulfuric or nitric acid was used, which would take a lot, so much time. BII, why does the reaction rate slow and then stop? Well, it's all to do with collision theory if it's rate of reaction. Uh, collision theory, so it depends. Uh, the reactants have to collide in the correct geometry with energy equal to or greater than activation energy. So it slows down because there are less collisions with the reactants or less frequent collisions. Less frequent collisions. Collisions. That's one point. Uh, and why does the reaction stop? Well, it stops because you've, you've run out of a reactant. They need you to identify which one it is that's run out, which is the limiting reagent reactant. Is it the chalk or is it the acid? Well, since the reaction's pretty much stopped and you've still got about 47.95 grams of limestone chalk, uh, that must be the excess. So the acid, therefore, must be the limiting, the one that ran out first. So why does the reaction stop? Uh, the, the acids run out, the, or the acid is limiting. And that's your second point. How many people got that? 50% of the people got that. Hmm. Okay, what's a source of error in the experiment? B-I-I-I. So you have to think about control variables. What didn't they control? Well, they didn't control the temperature. Uh, I don't think it would be that important, but they didn't control it. And those lumps, they look quite random, uh, but you can't really control the surface area of those lumps. So I'd go with either of those two answers. Uh, but there are other ones they've given. Uh, pieces of paper towel may have stuck to the limestone. Uh, the limestone absorbed water, and that increased the mass. But for sources of error, I'd say that uh, the temperature is uncontrolled. I get to your point there. Next up is their theory is that sulfuric acid causes a larger mass loss than nitric acid. Now I don't think you're a smarty pants for working out that nitric acid has only uh, one proton to donate. Sulfuric acid has two, so you'd expect that to be twice as much mass loss. Uh, most people got that. So the model answer says, uh, yeah, sulfuric acid's diprotic contains two H pluses, nitric acid 
just contains one. And just to confirm, the examiner's report says, very well answered. So don't think you're that clever if you can do it. Next one was poorly answered. And you know what? I have scratched my head a little bit with that. Looking at the data table, the sulfuric acid isn't the one that eats away at the limestone the most. So why is that? I had to think, but then of course there's that weird table at the top of, uh, of solubilities. And so it's to do with that, isn't it? The idea in years gone by would put in extra data you don't need, but now if it's there, if they give you a number or a table, you absolutely need it. So what it is, is when the sulfuric acid reacts with calcium carbonate, it doesn't really dissolve. It just kind of sticks onto the limestone. But when calcium carbonate uh, reacts with calcium uh, with nitric acid, it dissolves. So essentially, that's what it is. When the nitric acid reacts with the limestone, the product dissolves in the water, so it gets lighter. Sulfuric acid, the product doesn't really dissolve; it just sticks on. So anything like that, the calcium sulfate isn't uh, remains deposited. Yeah, that's the answer. So the calcium sulfate remains deposited. Now remember, you don't need full sentences. In fact, you'd be crazy to do full sentences. You're not doing chemistry, are you? You're doing fast chemistry, it's IB. No full sentences needed. All right, that's question one. Okay, question two. Ethanol was electrolyzed at different voltages, and we got this data here. So electrolyzed is uh, passing electricity through something and uh, changing it. As opposed to uh, a conductor, you pass electricity through a conductor and there is no change. That's come up years ago, not for a while. All right, so there's three different catalysts. So first of all, what's the effect of voltage on the yield of uh, ethanol on the platinum carbon catalyst? So this is the platinum carbon catalyst. Ethanol is the black uh, color, so that's pretty straightforward. As the voltage increases, the amount of ethanol decreases. It goes from 57 all the way down to 2. So, as the voltage increases, the amount of ethanol decreases. And it's always worth guessing if you've no idea. These sort of questions, there's only three answers. It goes up, it goes down, or it stays the same. Carbon dioxide on the platinum ruthenium carbon catalyst. So carbon dioxide is, uh, is this one. That's carbon dioxide. And we're on this catalyst. So the amount of carbon dioxide appears to go up, plateau, and then go down again. The IB would accept increase, then decreases, or increases, plateaus, and then decreases. So as you increase the voltage, the amount of carbon dioxide increases, then decreases. Which, of course, contradicts my previous advice. <laughs> if you're not sure what to say, just say it goes up, down, stays the same. That's good 80% of the time. Question 2a i i determine the oxidation state change for the for three of those four chemicals. So I'm actually going to do it for all of them. If you recall your oxidation state rules, uh, well, there is no rule for carbon because uh, it changes so much. Uh, the rule for hydrogen in a compound is it's plus one. Unless it's with a metal, then it's minus one. No metals here. So hydrogen's plus one oxidation state in a compound. Oxygen in a compound is minus two. Unless it's H2O2, then it's minus one. That exception doesn't apply here. Uh, this is how you can mess it up a little. If they were to ask you about hydrogen and you put plus three, they wouldn't accept that. You, you've summed the oxidation states of those three hydrogens. No, no. The only acceptable way to report an oxidation state, uh, and only 60% of the people got this right, is you put plus one if you're reporting an oxidation state. Or you can put plus one, plus one, plus one, 
but not plus three. Okay, I'm just going to fill these in. So following uh, another oxidation state rule, the sum of the oxidation states equals the charge on the molecule or ion. So they're all going to equal zero. Each of these four are uncharged. So let me try to work out what the, uh, what the carbon is. So that has to be uh, minus two, minus two. Minus one, minus one. This feels weird, but it's possible to have a zero oxidation state in a molecule. And that's going to be plus four. So back to the question. From ethanol to ethanol, how does carbon change? Well, it changes from minus two to minus one. And how does it change from ethanol to carbon dioxide? It changes from minus two to plus four. It's a point for each of those. Next question. Only 40% uh, of the people got that right. Which is the least to the most oxidized of the products? Well, if you're looking at products, exclude the ethanol. And I've actually put them in order. So it's the lowest to highest oxidation number for carbon. Minus one, zero, plus four. And just to let you know, if you'd have put one minus zero and four plus, if you use those as your answers to the previous question, you'd lose a point because uh, oxidation states have the sign first, then the number. If you put the number first and then the sign, you lose a point. So the answer was ethanol, ethanoic acid, and carbon dioxide for 2AII. The final question, the most effective catalyst to fully oxidize the ethanol and why? So back to this chart. So the most effective catalyst to make the most carbon dioxide, and they'd give you error carried forward if you didn't realize it was carbon dioxide. Well, it seems clear if that's carbon dioxide, then it's, isn't, it this, isn't it this catalyst? So platinum carbon, that's not enough at a point. You have to say why, and you could just say it makes the most carbon dioxide, which is a little circular, but there we go. Perhaps a better answer is that at every voltage, the platinum carbon catalyst makes more carbon dioxide than any of the other catalysts. That's it. And that's two done. That, wasn't, that was quite an easy section for paper three, I think.